Hello, I'm Carmen Werder from Western Washington University where I teach in the Communication Department and work with the Teaching and Learning Academy and also with Supporting Writing Instruction. And um, my name is Megan Otis and I am a graduate student here at Western Washington University in the Anthropology Department. And I also work with Carmen um, in the Teaching and Learning Academy and the Writing Instruction Support Program. And we are the happy co-editors of this lovely book engaging student voices in the study of teaching. What important questions does this book explore? Well, I think that this book in, um, explores a couple of important questions. Um, kind of the, the what and the how and the why of this work. Um, you know, what is it? What is student voices in the scholarship of teaching and learning? What does that mean? Um, and how do we do it? Um, and I think most importantly, why? Why do we do it? Mm -hmm. I think it also tries to get at the stories that are behind the scenes, the things that you might not know about if you hear a conference presentation about the work, more about the lived experiences of people doing the work alongside of each other. What light does it shed on learning? Well, I, I think it assumes that it only makes good sense that if you're doing scholarship on, on teaching and learning that you bring students into it. I mean, to omit student voices doesn't make any sense at all. And that if we really want the expertise, which we've, I think, come to understand that, that learners bring to it, um, we can't study learning without their voices. That it just, it's not a luxury anymore. It's absolutely necessary. I also think that when we are studying teaching and learning um, in partnership with students that we really do come to understand learning better. Um, and then when we do this work, we are able to make um, changes to teaching that more positively affects student learning. Mm -hmm. So I think that that um, is a really important um, part of doing this work. Can everyone engage their students in class this way? I definitely think that um, everyone can engage their students in this way. Um, I think that this work is very adaptive. Um, and, you know, faculty and also administrators and staff members can um, adapt it and um, mold it to whatever situation that they're in, whatever context they have, what, you know, they want to investigate. Um, but I think that um, another part of this is that um, we describe a set of principles um, that can be adapted to whatever context you're in, and that's really what this book does. Um, it's not so much do this, do this, do that, and now you have student voices in scholarship of teaching and learning. We have um, some you know, guiding principles that are, are adaptive. Mm -hmm. By all means, it's adaptive, and, and I think the co-authors show how adaptive it is because they describe so many different ways to bring students into the study. And certainly there are people who are doing it in many other ways, too, and not even calling it the Scholarship of Teaching and Learning. So um, it's important work, and it's happening in many ways, and, and I'm, I'm sure there will be many more new mm -hmm. models for it, too. Oh, well, I think also, um, we believe that with a little guidance, any student um, can be a good subtle partner. So um, what Carmen's co-authors say in chapter two, the, the keeners um, and the non-keeners and the in-betweeners, you know, so I think it's a common misconception that the students, um, you know, in this book or the students who do this work um, are the highest achieving, um, you know, leader types. Um, but they don't all start off that way, um, even if they become that way. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that not only can every faculty staff member do this work, but with a little bit of help, any student can do this work. Why should a teacher be excited about this pedagogical approach? <laughs> well, I, th I think there are several reasons. Um, one is that you just simply learn more about how students learn when you listen to what they say. I mean, it's 
it's the most important information that I've ever had, and I've been teaching for four years. But it wasn't until I really worked alongside of students studying, um, t teaching and learning together that I, I really understood some things from them. So it's just a, a better way to, to understand how students learn. I also think that um, it reminds us of why we got into teaching to begin with and, and why we care about it so much. And, you know, this maybe sounds a little jaded or something, but I, I really like students better as a result of doing the work. I mean, you see the most interested and smartest sides of them when you're studying alongside of them. Um, and I'm, I'm glad for that. I, I want to have that kind of regard for students. So that's another reason. I think this approach, um, <clears throat> not only do you get better research outcomes, but I think that you do get better student outcomes when you partner with students um, in studying and teaching and learning. Um, it's a really great way to engage students in their own learning, um, to you know increase active learning and reflection um, that will travel with them um, when they you know into other learning experiences that they have. Um, so I think that. Um, that's one reason why uh, I think faculty should be really excited about this is that it re I think it really has the potential to um, transform um, the way students learn and um, partnering with students in this work increases what Pat Hutchings calls pedagogical intelligence mm -hmm. um, so I think that that's that's really important mm -hmm. What evidence of effectiveness does the book offer in terms of improved student outcomes? I think um, <clears throat> several of the chapters have um, survey and interview um, um, research in them with the student co-inquirers that shows um, their, increased out, um, their increased outcomes. But I think this is really one area where um, we have really yet to delve into, um, you know, really examining um, the the outcomes for the student co inquirers. So mm -hmm. I think it's one place that we need much more research in the future. Mm -hmm. We need more longitudinal studies for sure. I, I do think we have quite a bit of evidence, and, and it's um, highlighted in the book in many places about attitudinal changes. Um, students report things like having a greater ownership for their own learning, which is huge. Um, also, things like they uh, come to care and respect faculty more, and that certainly raises the question of how does that improve their learning if they care more about their instructors. The students also talk about changing their learning practices, things like going to office hours when they didn't go before. Um, they talk about being more willing to ask questions in class. And faculty also talk about, faculty and staff talk about changes in their attitude towards students. Um, I alluded before about the, the idea of caring um, and respecting students more, the more that you come to know them. And they also change their teaching practices. So how all of this attitudinal uh, change adds up in terms of affecting their learning though, this is a, this is a question that needs way, way more research. So, the next book maybe. Yeah, stay tuned. <laughs>